です。Yes. Father, how we thank you for this another day that you gave us so freely. Now we ask that in the midst of this meeting, God, let our hearts and minds be clear and let us serve and be here in the spirit of unity. And we will so ever give you the praise and the honor. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.
the fire. Mayor, council members, a uh, few things going on. Uh, first of all, today, myself and Assistant Chief Davis, uh, we went to uh, the Dillon Park Pollard Architects, and we have finalized our construction documents for Station 2 uh, at 1701 First Street. Uh, it was pretty much a lengthy afternoon uh, as far as finalizing everything that needed to be done mechanically and electrically out there, and we're tentatively going to start taking bids uh, November 16th. November 16th. Uh, we'll run the bids through December 16th, uh, which they will be open on December 17th, and it will be brought before the council on December 21st uh, with the open bids. So again, that's the Dillon Pollard Architects. So any local contractors that you know of that may not be on their email address, I know we're going to uh, be flooding our Facebook accounts with uh, their address. If we got local contractors that want to go out and uh, seek bids on this building, we, we'd love to have them stay here in Kennett. So uh, hopefully that's going to be done. Uh, second thing that's occurred uh, tonight, we had a, a partial uh, Boot Hill Regional Committee public hearing. A part of that was for the possibility of building, rebuilding fire station number one at 309 St. Francis. Uh, talking to the Boot Hill Regional folks, they are in, in high hopes that this would be a total funded uh, grant. So unlike some of this other stuff where it requires a partial uh, requirement from the city to chip in so much money that this one may possibly be 100%. So that's been great news. So uh, that was part of the one reason that Bradley was here, and he certainly appreciated all the uh, turnout for it. So. Uh, let's see, another thing I need to talk about is our radios. I believe our last council meeting, uh, we opened the bids, and we had a bid for 167 and 19930 from Smith Two-Way Radio out of Fayetteville, Arkansas. And I believe due to the amount of money, we had to have it mentioned in two separate council meetings. So again, I ask again tonight that we accept this bid. 167, 199, 30. And that's for a total of 74 radios, and that will upgrade your fire and police department and their portable handheld radios. Is that coming to forward motion? Yeah, I'll take a motion. We got a motion. Second. Got a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, uh, Per request, uh, I did manage to get some environmental study uh, quotes. So I don't know when that needs to be brought up. Open or closed meeting? On real estate, oh, closed. Closed, no. Mm -hmm. what, what the properties? Just looking at uh, different properties in town, there's three of them. Are we buying any of them? No, we're just looking at them. Yeah, then it should be open. <coughs> we're not, it's, it's nothing that's going to affect the price of the sale price for the property, so it should be open. All right. Is this um, just the cost of it? Or? Yeah, it was, a, it was a cost for three different properties, and the total cost was about $2,000 per property. Okay. So the total from uh, Smith & Company Engineering, a total of $6,000 just to cover three properties that uh, I was requested. Is this property you're trying to sell, or is property you're trying to buy? Trying to buy. Okay. For what purpose? For what purpose? Yeah. Is it vacant land? What are they? Uh, we've got uh, one building that might, would be tore down. Uh -huh. Actually, two buildings that would be tore down, and then one that is a vacant lot at this time.
Yeah, we'll let's, let's have a finance meeting and we can go over that. Okay. Anything for me? Paul, is that uh, recent fire? You say it's under investigation. Yeah, uh, that was the last thing. Uh, again, we did have fire at the uh, Old Twin Rivers Regional Medical Center, the maintenance shed, and it is suspicious in nature, and it is under, currently under investigation. Are we seeing vag evidence of vagrancy up there? Yes. Uh, Can we see the property maintenance? Can you get forced that building be boarded up forever? Yeah, because it's becoming a concern from myself as well as Chief Wilson. We have concern for our city employees that have to go out there for either police or fire and rescue work. Uh, yeah, we very much are concerned about the safety of our departments as well as the citizens of Kent because that property is unboarded up and unsecured. We haven't done anything up to now to make sure it's secure. Other than issuing a warning letter, which is standard protocol for any, any type of a... Uh, How many days is that letter good for? Seven. seven it was days. sent out about, uh, probably about two weeks ago, and I'm about to check with Donnie, but uh, <coughs> follow up to see if he sent the uh, citation yet. Because okay. I noticed, <coughs> I go around here to the PT, go by there, and I've noticed First, it was a glass broke out. Now, the ER doors are just ripped wide open by right, a cracked right. car. Right. 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 Uh, yeah, there's windows broken out all yeah, the time. Yeah, it's getting worse all the time. It's getting worse. Yeah. Uh, one thing that is noted out there is the, uh, the electrical, what electrical was running out there was on that maintenance ship. So, yeah, that property now has no electricity to it whatsoever. Is it required to have electricity to fill this on? Not for a vacant structure, no. How about the sprinkler system that was in the stipulation it's, there for? It was for a certain time period, but once the OGW disconnected their main water, it was okay. it was understood that uh, they had no sprinkler system. Yeah, it's partial. Again, with that structure, the structure itself probably will not burn, but what furnishings are left, uh, wall coverings, so forth, things like that, yes, they can burn. Uh, we do have documented cases where there have been some small fires set out there. It not, not require the use of uh, the fire department, but folks, we are getting on winter time. Mm -hmm. Fires and vacant structures are going to increase. They always do. It's a, this time of year, once the temperatures drop below 50 degrees, we start seeing more fires in vacant property. And again, this property in, in that particular, we're very concerned about it. Again, there's a lot of catacombs. There's been a lot of firefighters die because of vacant commercial structures. Lots of firefighters. We don't want to be one of those. So the city's going to have to pay to secure that? No, it should fall no, back on the, the owner. On the owner. Mm -hmm. But again, we go, through the, we go through the ticketing process, the property maintenance, and we're at the point now where we'll, if, if a ticket has not already been issued, it will be. And how far, was, how far out are the tickets are getting? That's the thing. That'll be next year. What are we next up to? Year. What are we up to as far as yeah, tickets? Right there, right there. Oh, year. for there. Um, if we issued a ticket, say yesterday, yesterday, it'll be after January third. January third. Now. That's the, that's the day that we're writing tickets for. Right? And that's so, well up into. Say first, uh, I think December 6th is the only day for December, and we can do it on December 6th. So, what happens if the owner pays the ticket? Then, uh, what happens next? It's not just paying the ticket, part of the deal is they have to board the supply, they have to, they have to secure it. What about if they don't? That's when we start finding them, and that's also uh, when we can then have it hearing to condemn the property and take it over <clears throat> and secure it ourselves and charge it to them. Okay. So will we have the cost of the money? Yeah.
HR? I uh, just warn you, people on the HR committee, that we will, we will be having a meeting shortly, probably next week. Thank you, Maine. City Council, uh, we had a police committee meeting about a week ago or so. One of the subjects that we talked about was a quote from Smith Two Way Radio, Fayetteville, Arkansas, about upgrading our 911 system. You guys know we're in the process of switching over to Central Square. This upgrade will go hand in hand with that uh, new system. Uh, I do believe Mr. Hunter brought up the point that the county is currently doing the same upgrade. These two upgrades between our department and their department will be compatible. Which would be huge in time of disaster if something does happen. Think of all this hit. We can rely on their system. If their system gets hit, they can rely on us. We kind of work together. Uh, this is an upgrade that eventually we're going to have to do at some point. Um, I think right now we've discussed it briefly the financing of it from the CARES Act money. Uh, it's something that this is qualified for. Uh, sooner, when, if we can approve this, as soon as we approve it, while they're here working on the county, they can do our grade too, maybe save us a little bit of money. While they're here, we'll see where they go. Total cost is $52,004. That's not great. We're working with right now. Is all the equipment is not one of What time frame will this be obsolete? I wonder. I think it's weird. Like, how long would it be good for? Yeah. It's not actually it, Yeah. Go ahead. It's not actual radios. It's upgrading the radio system. Oh, the, the radio system. system. It's the system. Yeah, it's the system. But it was radios again for those. Yeah, right. No, we're That's in. where we do it every day now. They're not compatible or they need to be updated. Yeah. It, it's like anything else electronic, but well, at some point it needs to be changed out and upgraded. So, uh, this kind of gets us ahead of the game if we can. This is for the 911 systems. Mm -hmm. and where did you say? The CARES Act money, can you start using them right away? or? We can use it for the American Rescue because it has to do with public safety. Okay. So, is there a motion from the police committee? Motion. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Yeah. This is good. Any other discussion? Yeah. So, the, the, we're going to do this, the money is here, or? The money will come yeah, out of the CARES Act. Yeah, so, we have, yeah, it's no... It's not, not going to cost us anything okay. right now. Uh, that's just what I wanted to hear. That's what I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it now, we'll be better. Yeah. So, all right. Um, so, we got a motion and a second. All favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. Right. I can hold it down tomorrow and talk this started on you. Okay. Uh, as far as department report go, uh, stats for last month, through our dispatch, we handled uh, 1,917 calls for service. Uh, officers made 360 traffic stops, or 28 accidents, worked 19 burglaries, 86 disturbances, 28 domestic violence. 28 shoplifting, 37 stealing things, and then citizen assist was 1,284. And keep in mind some of these calls do involve squad 51 when they respond. This is everything that came to the 911 center, plus what our officers responded to. Uh, also, Rocky, our canine, uh, in the last 30 days he has deployed 13 <coughs> times. Uh, he seized over 13 illegal narcotic items. Led to seven different arrests, one successful track of a burglary suspect, and they made three successful apprehensions that we probably would not have been able to give if we not had him around. So he's been used a lot. Uh, I can't say enough about the work that Aaron's doing with his dog and working out really well for our department. So you say uh, Rocky's faster than that? His protective gear, do we have that here? Is it less than yet? I'm sorry? His protective gear, do we have that here? I don't think it's in yet. I think they said you're talking about the best, the staff best, the book. I think they said it took about six to eight weeks before we had it. So it's still a little ways off. Thank you. We do need to have a closed session, please, maybe tonight. Oh, okay. Talk, also, would you talk to me later about uh, I had a, somebody from the community okay. give me some information about the fire? Okay. All right. Big stuff is that we got the road done uh, for the peanut factory, so we got a peanut road now, and. Uh, uh, we're having to just the base, right? Just the base, that's right. And we are uh, having to maintain it, and we ended up having to buy a piece of equipment. Did you end up getting it? Yes. Okay. We bought a piece of equipment to make sure we can maintain it. Once uh, the harvest is over and we can deal with the weather and all that, they're going to come back and pour the rest of the concrete or pour the concrete for the road, and we'll have a complete road at that time. But right now, it's certainly usable, and that's. Uh, main thing is that we maintain it. And, uh, That'll all, be a lot safer than going out for it. Sir. Oh, definitely. I think they're happier about it. I think uh, we need to stay on the, uh, uh, the turn lane idea and all that, but uh, we're working towards that. The fence row is also taken care of, right? What? The fence row. We've got yes, we got it. We got the fence row cut back to the property line, and uh, I'm going to have... Uh, Skelton go back out there and, and remark it, and we're going to put up permanent markers where the city property is. I will need to, I don't know if Terry or <coughs> I need to talk to Mets. Is there, will, will there be an easement on that? I don't know how that works with that railroad property. For where our property line is, will there still be an easement for maintenance or anything, or will it just be to the property line and stop? It's just the property line. Okay. <laughs> Need to get a need to try for, to for that anything future. <coughs> either condemn it or preferably give permission for the adjoining land to have it. We're going to have it remarked and we're going to put up permanent markers on the property line. Good. Because the other ones were tore down, most of them, except the ones that were in the fence row. Okay. Uh, <coughs> go ahead and tell them about the numbers. Sorry. <coughs> Knuckles contractors have uh, just about finished all their intersections. Right now they're over on Vandeventer. They've had a lot going on on Vandeventer trying to get that stormwater stuff done. We had AT&T issues we had to get moved, and then they found a big chunk of concrete, that, sort of like we had found in another intersection that we busted out. When they started busting, they had a water line in it. So Sea Line Water came took care of that for us, and they are right now preparing to put the pipe in so hopefully in the next couple days they'll get that pipe in and get that road board back after that they will only have uh one more intersection that'll be at anthony and uh second 
and that will have storm water with it also. They're going to put a new pipe in there, fill it in the future. If we have to put that, replace that line down after that they won't have to tear that intersection back out. They have, uh, they had 11 intersections that were contracted, and uh, two of them had storm water repairs done to them. And then they did this <coughs> band of inner and lease through. We kind of just added that in, and they they said they'd do that for us. Gave us a separate price for that. Other than that, that's all we've got from Knuckles Brothers. Unless y'all got a, any questions about that? Do we think the chunk of concrete is restricting water flow? Do what now? Do we think that chunk of concrete is restricting flow of water? <clears throat> We're really not sure what was going on. We know there was a 24 inch pipe. That's the line coming from over at, at Tatum and Jackson. Had a 24 inch line and we could go in so far and we hit a concrete wall. So we kind of thought that might have been it, but this actually ran north and south the direction of the road. Sea line water didn't even know it was there. It wasn't marked, so there's really nobody really knows why that big chunk of concrete was there. But it was probably two or two or three feet wide by a couple feet deep, sitting over top of that line. And as soon as they started jackhammering it, I guess it started leaking. For some reason, it had already been replaced there because they said Sea Light Water said there was clay tile on either side of it. And this was a metal pipe. So, but they've also done where the 24-inch line was. They concreted it up and put a 12-inch above it at some point in time to drain that through there. So now we're going back with two 15-inch pipes, which will get it from the 24-inch we've cleaned over across the road into all the WPA lines and hopefully take care of a getting that water out of there a whole lot quicker than it has been. And hopefully they'll be done with that in a couple days and then, uh, well, it kind of goes into storm water, but I'll go ahead and since we're talking about that, I talked to the pipeline and people and they said let them know when the uh, contractor gets done over there and they will try to set up a time to come and, and line our pipe from uh, the consignment shop to Vanderbilt. They made, uh, Knuckles contractors made the box <coughs> four by four so they'll be able to get in there and line that pipe without any problem. Good. If you um, start we okay yeah, for you. Um, we've been getting quotes on the brush cutter that we're after and uh, trying to keep uh, the ditches and such under control and uh, we've had a tough time keeping working parts right now. So we did get uh, two quotes on the brush cutter. Uh, one of them gave us a $7,100 discount, so their price was $21,577. The other's uh, quote was $33,586. And the good thing about the cheaper one is it actually covers a bigger area. And so uh, uh, one of them 16 foot by 58 inches, the other one 16 foot by 40 inches. So uh, our, our stormwater money is in good shape to go ahead and go with something like this because we are so we are going to go with the Lord a bit. Uh, is that what we? Uh, yes, it's uh, it's over here in Dyersburg. It's a little bit closer, and we've dealt with them before. It's at first choice. We've uh, bought some of our other stuff from there before. Mm -hmm. No problem with parts or maintenance. No. Uh, as you got to look into that. Yeah. No. The we'll only for a while too. The only <laughs> well. The only problem we foresee is the problem we're having with everything, and that's getting it here, or they either it's either sitting in a bay somewhere waiting to be unloaded, or they don't have enough people on staff to get the orders out. But we're having a problem with everything, getting any any not, parts. Not, but not if it's made in the USA. Yeah. <laughs> so that's where you get to do your research and see if you can. You know, look this is one a. Uh, you're not going to have problems. It is a land pride mower, and the other one is a uh, diamond. I've heard of land pride. They've, they've got a lot of stuff out there. He doesn't foresee any problems getting it other than just like everything else, maybe shipping delays and stuff, which we've had with some of the other stuff. We've no estimate on when it could be here. We can have it in a week. Yeah. He told me use it in the winter time or you use it all the time? Do you want to use it in the winter time as well? Yes. All the this, time. One of the problems we've got now, the the uh, excavator mower is down, like we had discussed. Mm -hmm. And uh, with this, this will hook to the back of the tractor on a three-point hitch, so we can only go so far with the excavator, and then we have to load it on the trailer and haul it, which takes a little bit of time. 
on the tractor we could just drive there a whole yeah. lot quicker but our uh, truck that we used to haul the excavator to pull the trailer is that giving us problems it was down for about an hour today rear end locked up in the middle of the road and it wouldn't move so uh, we've had problems with it in the past it's a 1998 ford truck and it's the only thing we've got a hitch on that will pull our trailer for the excavator so if that goes down the excavator is down for however long it takes to fix that or if the mower issues with this it gives us another option so we don't have to shut down during mowing season we'll still be able to mow okay. plus with this we'll also be able to start one on each side of town to mow to get it done a lot quicker during the mowing season because by the time he gets from one end of town to the other with the excavator it's about time to start over again so that's if you have enough employees yes yeah yeah if enough if you have enough employees we have a strange problem with the street department stormwater and that uh, the equipment looks good they take they do a good job of taking care of it keeping it cleaned up all that but the mechanical aspect of it you cannot do anything about age and mileage and uh, it still may look great but it may be a piece of equipment with a lot of uh, hours on it yeah we've got two or three trucks that are just well age is a big factor with them and get parts for them some of them we had to go uh we've got one kodiak they don't even make anymore we've had to find a junkyard to get parts for it out of and and fortunately they had what we needed but it's already starting to wear it was steering column and it's already starting to wear so at some point we're not going to be able to get parts for these vehicles anymore and the, we, the, we got the money in uh, storm water for this uh, we can use some of the pipeline money because it didn't cost much to get the pipeline we thought it would okay. i want to make a motion that we go ahead and move forward with the purchase of the, uh, the land pride mower so I'll second your motion. Okay. We got first thing in the discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 There you go. Thank y'all. Thank you. Oh, I'm glad y'all have any questions. Speaking of the equipment, uh, we're looking at through human resources is coming up with a uh, method that was consistent <coughs> with disposal of old equipment. Correct. Uh, old tractors or whatever. And so we'll be working on that. Okay. Thank y'all. I don't know if Victor has anything for storm Victor. water or not. No. Uh, no, not really. Are we okay with engineers and all that? Yeah, well, uh, I have been, uh, me and Keith both have been talking to the uh, storm water engineer over our plan. Uh, myself and Keith will be going next week. Uh, we've got a meeting at DNR. Uh, at Popper Bluff uh, to go over record keeping and what we need to do to stay in compliance with our stormwater plan. Uh, the only other thing is just uh, uh, we're having a little later fall. The leaves have not dropped yet, but they're fixing to, and they're probably all going to drop at once. I'd just like to uh, let the public know that even if you do have a uh, contractor to rake your yard, or blow your yard or whatever, that it's ultimately your responsibility not to let them put those in the street mm -hmm. so they get in the storm drains. So that's it. It doesn't mean set them on fire either. <laughs> Record. Well, it's also, it's, uh, no fires after dark, mm -hmm. fires, is that right, Paul? Yeah, so if you do burn, uh, make sure you extinguish it before dark. And, days and call the fire department. Paul, what's the uh, requirements for burning leaves? Uh, Notify the, during certain months of October and November, it's not a requirement to call. But however, the rules of burning yard waste only and having it out before dark does apply. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. I don't think we have anything from the industrial right now. Senior citizens? Uh, no, it, we uh, haven't had a meeting since last week. Okay. All right. Um, and on unfinished business, in closed session, we have been discussing uh, the hospital and the CON. Uh, per your guys' request, I have been in contact with BFG uh, and within Main Street Health Ventures, which is Carrie Nobles. Uh, 
we have said, told them that you know, there's a possibility that we would be interested in the property. Um, and they are interested in the possible as a tax letter to it. And also for your request of making sure that the CON is still active to do it. With the recent events of the fire out there and under their investigation, uh, I've already sent a message to them that you know all that's going to need to be put on hold for right now. Uh, and so we will let the entire fire investigation, all that, paint itself out. Uh, but again, it's just everything has been in discussion. You know, do we want it? Do we not want it? What are we going to do with it? What can we do with it? You know, with an active CON, you know, fifty thousand dollars on a. Twenty-five, thirty million dollar budget isn't anything. Six months worth of work on it, you know, that may be something that, as a group, would form to go out and look for a hospital um, and bring a group in. It's like, look, we have the property, we have a CON. You break ground, uh, whether it's they tear down the building as part of their payment for the that's property. The, that's or, the important part. Who's going to demolish the building? I'm not there yet. Uh, that uh, you know. I've also been in talk with uh, Mitzi Dell about a grant. There is a CDBGV, CV, there's a COVID grant COVID. that's uh, for demolition um, and it would pay for a large majority of that and she is uh, sending that paperwork and information to us to go over, especially now that there's, you know, we've got a lot more time to go over it. Um, and uh, to look at because uh, I know there's you know lots of rumors out there, but that's what the uh, uh, everybody up here was discussing. Where do we go from? So out trying to gather information and what to do with it. It is not a done deal. Uh, it's a long ways from being a done deal. Uh, but it is what is out there, uh, and uh, <clears throat> so uh, again. The, that the fire being a uh, suspicious fire, uh, you know, no one's going to take over a piece of property doing that, but finding out what our grand aspects are for demolition and then that whole process and would be a bid if we did accept it. So there's a ton of questions and a ton of uh, things that have to still be gone through to work through, but, uh, but it's still, you know, as what you guys asked for, it's what gone out and, you know, tried to get some information, and uh, a lot of it's now put on. Well, without guaranteed money to demolish the building, I'd say my personal opinion is to stay away from it. Okay. And I can make that in a form of a motion. We don't accept ownership until we have guaranteed money to demolish the building. So I'll have more information by the next council meeting. Yeah, that, we're just support. wasting time moving it back. We just need to act. But like I said, we can put something in a form like get it with an option. We're not going to accept ownership without having the money to take care of it. That should be their responsibility as far as the appearance goes and the demolition. We don't need to load it on our backs and assume their liability. We don't want ownership of it. And Unless we have guaranteed money to take the building down. And that's what most of the citizens are sending messages about. I would really like to see us get serious with a committee to deal with. Last time we had three one, different committees. One committee, not yes. four or five committees. Last time we had three committees doing all this at least. And and I'd really like to see us get one committee, even if it's uh, or if there's multiple committees to begin. Communicate. Let us. Well, it, it it really needs to be. If there's going to be arguing about it mm -hmm. and all that, then get it under that committee and let's get it done because it's just set. We've just been waiting so long. Mr. Bill, would you like to head up that committee? Not particularly, but I would. <laughs> <laughs> Do whatever it takes because we need a hospital. And, and yeah, I don't think you find anybody that would say that we don't need a hospital. Right, that's Correct. what we found uh, out that last meeting. Yeah. Right. Um, so if that's what it takes, I will do it. Uh, and I will just say that if anybody's interested in getting on that committee, then contact me and we'll start working on meeting times and things like that. Okay. Okay. All right. 
And uh, to segue into a little piece, uh, for most of the city council, uh, it's one of the things we've tried working on in the past, but we're working with Brad Floyd right now so that uh, we have a more unified email address to everybody. And so over the next week, everybody here will have a new email address. Uh, so that will also help streamline that process a little bit. And uh, um, so we'll get all that out to the community. But if uh, does anybody have any objections to Mr. Bill being the chairman of that committee? Welcome to the committee. Anybody else want it? I'll be glad to be on there. Okay. Alright. Back, back to my motion. Let's not forget. No. But there's a motion, but there is a motion on the okay. board. Not to accept the building unless we have guaranteed money to demolish it. Second. Second. Mike did. All in favor? Aye. Any All right. Also in your package, you would have found uh, World Orphans Day. Uh, the proclamation and uh, I don't really need to read all this. <laughs> <laughs> no, everybody has it, you've already okay. Yep. Yeah, okay. And so um, in your packet you'll find a war proclamation. Um can't remember what he's saying off the top of my head. Um that the uh, first Monday of the week. Uh, but in, in your packet you have a proclamation that we sent out. And uh, uh, Mr. Brennan was able to get a, a lot of good information over there on uh, the orphans and uh, uh, American foster care age 18, uh, from uh, birth through age 18. So it's a, uh, a good proclamation. And one thing that uh, for some reason my email didn't go through, so I'll send an email back to CLGW and they were asking if they would change their lights on the poles to purple. And uh, uh, I thought I hit send, but I guess I didn't. So I'll send that and check back with uh, um, with CLGW to see if they can change that. We don't have a purple. We don't have a purple. We have a pink. Okay. All right. Can we can we do a pinkish purple? Pinkish purple. I'll cover it. Okay. Pinkish purple works. Yeah, it has it has been pink for breast for breast cancer. Okay. All right. So. Yeah, if we can leave it within there, but yeah, it's when I looked because I hadn't heard back from Dave. It's like, and I didn't get sick. So, uh, um, the day is November eighth is the main orphan day, but they ask for uh, on Mondays uh, throughout the month of November. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, besides that, um, mayor's report. How much? Uh, oh, go ahead. New business section. Yeah, oh, new business. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting with the uh, Chamber of Commerce Board today and discussed uh, some of the items of concern and, uh, of course, concern being in the hospital, uh, part of it. Also, concern to me was the economic development and how we're going to proceed forward with economic development. The Chamber's been very active in the past. Uh, then we had a Few, few years here recently where we have not been involved in it, and uh, I'd like to at some point take a look at what we need to do to uh, get the uh, chamber involved in it, how they're going to be able to deal with it financially and time-wise and, and numbers of employees, things like that. So we need to be checking into that in the future as well. I think there's enough of them here that we'll probably hear from the public section here. I'll leave it at that. On mayor's report, the biggest thing was talking about you know what we've been doing uh, on the hospital and looking at you know trying to move forward. What does the council need to do? What does the city need to do? There's a million and one different answers out there, and our million and one questions, but there's nowhere near that many answers out there. Uh, so uh, uh, everyone up here is trying to do their best to work forward to go and do what they need to do, um, and. Uh, but it's not an easy job by forming this committee. Maybe this one will uh, get a little further than the last one. And we can go from there. So it's just, again, if you want to uh, sit on that committee, uh, we'll have a new email for uh, Mr. Bill next week. 
uh, for uh, you can give them a holler or leave, or leave a message up here. Uh, but there's going to be, uh, again, a lot of work that needs to be done. Uh, roll our sleeves up and you know, get back into the trenches and find out. Uh, but one of the things we need to try and look out for is that, you know, if there's uh, you know, if somebody here, you know, three or four different people going to the same affiliation, representing the city, that they want this, it sort of needs to be all under one umbrella so that you've got one focus going forward instead of two or three different people going and talking with this organization and that organization. And then when you get there, they're like, well, we already talked with, you know, John Doe, and they said they were from Kenneth, and now you're uh, Susie Doe, and you're from Kenneth. Um, what's the disconnection there? So uh, we'll keep working forward and working on there. So with that, um, all right, we'll go down to uh, uh, public <coughs> comment. Ms. Laura? Um, I just want to thank the, the committee, the Senior Tax Committee, for meeting with us because that has really helped and I think it kind of helps keep everybody informed. Also, um, I kind of wanted to, I wanted to um, get with you because uh, Kenneth Oaks, uh, staff, seniors, and I want to thank you for approving the purchase of the new dishwasher. We had hoped that the current dishwasher that we had, which is one that we had moved from the old location of the community building to the new location, uh, on Harrison would have sufficed for many years. Uh, however, after having to have it repaired, we were told that the Hobart model we had was obsolete and parts were no longer available or they were harder to locate. And in fact, there was one when we had it fixed last time and they said, you're lucky that the, the motor didn't go out because they had in, uh, I think, Osceola, there was the school that they had the same one we have, and they still had not found, you know, the pump for it. So, anyway, when the building was donated, and we started fundraising for the remodel, Aging Matters, our corporate office, tried to save money by sending used stoves and a used dishwasher from other centers that had purchased new ones. So we were able to work with Brasco and trade in the old stoves, for a refurbished one at a reasonable cost. And the dishwasher that was provided to us by, by uh, uh, Kay, Aging Matters, the corporate office, was not big enough because it wouldn't hold what we had. So we went down and we pulled the one that we had down in the community building and brought it up. And uh, so mm -hmm. Morris Construction was able to install it the older model and make it work for us. However, because of its age, we're finding more and more problems. So anyway, the last time it went down, we were without a dishwasher for several days while parts were being ordered. However, again, if the pump ever goes out, uh, we'll not be able to replace it. And so we do want to thank the council for the approval and we've obtained and submitted three bids for its replacement. John, did you get those other two bids? Uh, I haven't. I came by, but you were going today. I'll get the captain. Okay. Because um, I had sent them down. Anyway, um, and again, Brasco once more is the lowest and the one who can install it. Uh, we're going to see about a discount with the two trade-ins because we've got those two dishwashers and we'll see if perhaps we can trade those in because then they'll have parts for others. So perhaps they'll give us some, much like they did the stove, and hopefully lower the cost some for it. So, again, we appreciate the, the committee for meeting and working with us each month. And I believe as a team, we can provide quality programs, healthy meals, wholesome social activities, and that exercise room uh, that's very beneficial to Kenneth's aging population. And as you know, a healthy senior community is a healthy community. So I want to thank you again. Thank you. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Mayor mm -hmm. and Council and fellow citizens. I don't know which way to turn this. I'll turn it this way so you guys can see. The folders are being handed out to the Council with information. Um, I'm coming before you this evening to ask this Council and the Mayor, as well as fellow citizens, to join with us in applying for a grant application through the CBDG grant funding COVID-19. As you know, when we first embarked on this plan, I came before the council before COVID-19, and we thought we were going to build then. We did go forward with our workforce development training that we talked about and the computer lab. Right now, the space that we have, we have outgrown. Uh, we serve children from second through the fifth grade with the 4-H program, which is a mentoring program that we partner with Lincoln University. Also with workforce development programming, and that is also a partnership with Lincoln University. And then we looked at um, our community that we serve, also back to school program. All of those things that we're currently doing, we now don't have space for. We're a small church, and I'm sorry I should have started with, even though most of you know my face and my name, I'm Reverend Dinah Tapman. I am the pastor of the St. John AME Church, right on the corner of Van Vendor and West Commercial. And so we have been highly encouraged to think about building a multi-purpose building. That multi-purpose building will house child's development space, workforce development space, as well as space available for the community. What I put forth to you is like Paul did, to defend his um, experience. I do have development experience. I'm a partner in $86 million development in my own city, in St. Louis, Missouri. I'm also served as a council person in my own city and I am the automatic rep for the Public Safety Division. And so I'm coming asking before this council because for the CBDG, as you are aware, that the government entity has to apply on your behalf. And all we're asking, we have an estimated cost of $575,000. The church has no debt. We don't owe anybody anything. So the land that we're building on, we own. And because we want to remain good stewards of what God has entrusted to us, we don't want any debt. And so to offer our overall community a place where our children can continue to come, we can continue to have that space for the workforce development to help empower a citizenry that's getting ready for more industries that's coming to this region. Also, they have that space for our children to come. Right now, for our 4-H program, we are out of space. And we're keeping them safe by not having that many close together. Also, we have entered into a partnership with the Alzheimer's Association. So we're going to have that component. And so with all of that, those programs and those services that we're offering to our community, we need more space. And so when we were encouraged to consider applying for a grant for the Child Development Center, we asked if we could embark on a building that would encompass everything we're already doing. And we were encouraged to do so. But of course, we need partners. And our partners would be this mayor and this board who would partner with us and write that grant on our behalf. I have also overseen a $5.2 million project that I myself created for my home church in St. Louis, Missouri. And so I have the experience. We have a board that's an experienced board. This will be done through the 501c3 entity of our church, which is Fruit of the Spirit Ministries. 
and those persons who serve on our board is Carolyn Ellis, who is a native Kennett um, person, her and her husband. They own um, a towing company. Also, Mr. James Powell, you guys know James, a Powell Funeral Home. Danny Ray of uh, Southern Bank, and also Dr. Mike Mellon. So we chose persons within the community to come alongside of us to be a replication of what our community looks like. And the other three members are members of our church. Our mother of our church, Mother Willa May Weaver. Also, we have one of our trustees, Ms. Pamela Kinney. And then we have a person that we call a steward in the AME church, which is Ms. Anita Garden. So again, this center will house, the way that you see it now, would be cut down to accommodate that cost of 575000 or under in order, again, to keep us out of debt but still enough space to accommodate everything we're already doing but give us a little bit more space to do that. And as you all know, who are in development, the highest cost of any project is the land. We own our land. So I'm asking that the mayor and the council will vote in affirmative and that you guys will partner with us by writing for this grant on our behalf for the CBG funds. There's a $2 million cap. We don't want what we don't need. And like I said, we're only asking for $575,000 or less in order to build this right on that corner of Van der Vendor and West Commercial Street. And I'm open for any questions that anybody would have. Yes. Just, just because of the CDBG and with it having to do with coronavirus, it has to be a facility that maintains or corresponds to vaccines, anything that has to do with COVID-19. It can be a community center, but the main purpose of the community center has to be COVID-related in order to do it under the CB. If you go through the regular block grant, we cannot apply for that right now just because we have Fire Station 2. And so. Well, I did check with the state on that mm -hmm. because I did hear that information and I got that reconfirmed because I had give, been given the same information and we were told that we could because the information each year is true. It does not have to um, guarantee that we're part of the vaccination. We just have to have that tie back to COVID-19 information or prevention. So if you look at, and I can tie back some of the things, the workforce development, one of the things that happened, and we all know, a lot of people were forced out of the workforce. And so with the workforce development piece, we are retraining and preparing people for a new citizens. So that exactly ties back to the COVID-19 that caused that. As far as child care development, another impediment and another anchor of those who had to go back to work and had no place for their children to go. That child development piece ties back as far as the COVID-19 because it was caused by the COVID-19. And how can we prevent that? Because we would have additional space for that. We were told that we could not have governmental entity tie back, which means we couldn't have council meetings or anything done with the government that would be a part of that or use that space. So we did double check with that directly with the state because I was concerned because I was giving that information to it. Any other questions or concerns? So again, I would like, like for this council to consider that the city would apply on behalf. One thing that I said because I did talk to the mayor, we're not concerned about the money. So the administrative cost, we would give back to the city. Because I know there's programs that the city and things that the city needs. We're not taking what we don't need. And so any cost, as far as the administration that comes with this grant, we are relinquishing that. And I do want to work on the project for the hospital. 
when I first came, I offered my assistance because I'm a pastor here, but I'm a part of this community. So anything I can do to help further along the projects that we have, if you look at my record, and if you Google me, you'll find out that the things that God has allowed me to do has prospered. And that's because I have a servant's heart. And so, again, I'm asking that this council and this mayor, along with the citizens, you guys would just say, just be egging us on and champion for us would allow us to become even a more permanent place in this community by applying for this grant for us. John, um, could we get this to fall into the Senior Citizen Committee and get that? As a recommendation? Uh -huh. As going to do a recommendation? Yeah. So, because normally the way we do this type of stuff is it goes committee, the committee researches it out, and then the committee makes a recommendation to the council. And just looking at our committees, we don't specifically have one, but... You just have to make sure that it's uh, available to all senior citizens within mm -hmm. the city, and that the majority of what's being presented there is going to serve senior citizens. Mm -hmm. That's why we thought possibly ask it to the senior citizen committee. Okay. Well, so you're willing good. to take it on, huh? That is kind of concerning. Okay. Well, no, I mean, uh, for the senior citizen committee to look into it doesn't require, just because your committee's looking into sure. it, doesn't require sure. that it's available to all sure. senior citizens or anything like that. Sure. It's, it's the purpose of your task. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, you can't use it. Yeah. You know, unless it is, you can't use the senior citizens' tax. But as far as the committee looking into it, as far as the feasibility of the sponsoring the, the grant, we can do that. Yeah. Is the grant a hundred percent grant, or is there a match? No, that's the beauty of this. It's a hundred percent yeah. grant, no matching at all. But the city usually doesn't we use one or two places that we do it our grants. Regional or say, uh, individual that does grants for that area. And along with the administrative side, the city would also be responsible for architectural as well as engineering. So those are stuff that the grant would not cover. It's just the actual building of it. Well, I'm checking to that too creatively because we have a new market tax credit partner. We won't be using that because we lowered the cap. So we, the cost for the engineering piece and the schematics, we already have the uh, drawings, architecture drawings, and the schematics for that, so that's no cost to that. And so the engineering piece is only oversight. It would not be a um, responsibility as far as the city and the board, because we as the parent entity take over ownership of that. And if you go through your research, you'll find all of we so, have been in extensive talks with the state because they're the one who approach us because they knew the work we were doing and they know me because I built relationships. And they were asking how we were doing with our space and we, if we were interested in. So in having those relationships on the state level and because of the other work I have done, we were able to make sure we had all the Correct. So, who would own this half million dollar building? We would. Through the Spirit Ministries, would own. And it's called the Fruit of, Fruit of the Spirit Ministries? Yes. Through the Spirit Ministries, Kenneth Missouri is the 501c3 arm of St. John African Methodist Episcopal Church. And as you all know, the guidelines when you apply for any nonprofit that applies for CBGG funds have to have a governmental sponsor. And because we're part of the city opposed to the county, we had to approach the city council in order to get that done. So we'll put this under with John if you guys can set up and look at it and uh, come back with yeah. a recommendation. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'm very happy to hear Steve and his scope that he brought up for the hospital COM. Yeah. Um, before I get into that, though, I, I do want to ask um, the question that's concerning the hospital COM. Um, it's something I should probably call about, but just wanted to bring it up this evening. Uh, I was driving on the um, uh, in fact, let me just discuss it with the code enforcement later. Yeah. That's probably more appropriate at the time. But uh, back on the CLN, again, I wanted to preach, uh, appreciate Steve's uh, vote on, on the CLN. Um, I'm glad that we are all wanting to work on the same page. And I, I feel like there's getting some traction right now. Bill, I'll be more than happy to talk to you tomorrow about the committee. I think there's a, a fairly supportive group, a very large supportive group that will take the reins and run. <coughs> Um, I'm hopefully I'm glad or wipe our hands clean to BFG. We need to get that cleaned out. Um, rumors have been flying, so I just wanted to be sure that you all are aware that we were, were happy with the outcome. Um, hopefully, we can clean our hands of BFG and we'll move forward. The, oh, the, the rumor mill of the hospital or the CON um, on, the, on the cover looks good. But underneath, it has a lot of risk. I'm afraid there's a lot more risk than there is reward. And so, again, I do want to thank you all for allowing us to do that this evening. Thank you. Yes. 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 Yes.